Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Gwen, and I am back. It's been three days that I took a little break off, and it was really good. I'm sure it was good for you as well. And as I look in the camera, I can see the sun, how it's hitting my face through that skylight there coming through my office door. So I hope that's not too distracting for you. Let me see if I can pull away from it a little bit. So hopefully this is better. And I hope that you had the most amazing weekend ever. I did a little bit of relaxing and, you know, I was gone to a funeral last week, Saturday, and decided that I was going to take a whole week and just rest and reflect and do some work while I was there, meet with a few people, still conducting business as usual. But that is the beauty of this entrepreneurial lifestyle. With a laptop and a cell phone and internet connection, you can continue your gig. And as you know, the internet connection was a little choppy there. And so there were a couple times when things fell out and I had a several warnings about the internet not being stable. So I am back and I am very, very delighted to be back here with you. And you recall that last time when we were talking, I had a conversation about women. Moms, and particularly their children. And so that was my conversation with you. And I want to pick that up a little bit today. And just to continue that, I won't be continuing on the kids topic for a lot. But I am bringing this to your attention because, as you know, I have a book that is coming out. And I did send out a survey to a couple of the women's groups to have them give me feedback or questions that they may have about things that they would like to see included in the book. And I was very, very elated when I got the response back. A number of people replied back. I'm sure there are more who could have, but I'm grateful for the feedback that I got or the, the responses or questions that I got. And one of the questions that I got, I am addressing it here today, and it's also addressed in the book, Single Moms from Striving to Thriving, One-on-One Success Tips. And it's a success tips book. And for those of you who may be watching this broadcast and you may not be familiar with who I am, once again, I'm Dr. Gwen from the Dr. Gwen International Training and Empowerment Academy, and I'm host of the iTunes show, The Dr. Gwen Show. And before that, I had many, many roles. I started my role as an educator decades upon decades ago. As a classroom teacher, migrated through the school administrative level, became an executive leader in the school district, and then a college professor, where I worked to train other teachers and other professors who were a part of my department that I was responsible for. So here I am, having acquired all of that experience, I have quite a bit of vicarious experience on parenting, let alone I'm a mother of six children, three biological children and three stepchildren. So there were six children in my household, plenty of experiences in raising those children, and also those vicarious experiences of those parents coming to my office, with their kids asking questions, kids tattling on their parents, and parents concerned about their kids, and having after having dealt with that for a lot of years, I have quite a bit of experience and insight on parenting. My kids are all grown, they're all adults now, and very successfully so. The two youngest ones are seniors in college, uh, right now as we speak, and then they will be also joining the ranks of the other four ahead of them. So my conversation here with you today is to give you some tips and ideas on how to raise your kids successfully. 
Now, I don't have any business telling you how to run your household, right? However, what I want to do in the context of my empowerment philosophy, I want to empower you to live your life and to raise your kids the way you want to do it. And I know that there's not a single parent who does not want success and happiness for their child. So this is what the conversation is going to be based on today. And for those of you who watch this later, leave your comments below. I really want to see those. And I really want to see how you're thinking. And if you have any questions, feel free to generate those questions because that is what I'm here for. I want to feel as though that I am making an impact for you and making a difference in your life. So be sure that you're leaving that information for me and I will be sure to respond to that. So the question is, my conversation, respecting your child's uniqueness and channeling their passions. Now this is a big things for, thing for parents. And I know as an educator that the system is not as expansive as it could be. It really is not. There are limited numbers of coursework, limited numbers of classes, limited numbers of conversations that surround people's profession. And people typically go to school knowing that they're going to be one of those lists of professions. And if you don't happen to have the academic acumen, then people tend to think that you are going to trade school because you are not as smart. But that is a flaw in our system. And it is a flaw that you as parents can correct at home. Do not allow anyone or any system to determine where you put your child's track one. I've been guilty, as I said, before I knew all of this as a parent. You know, we have a way of telling our kids, okay, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, you're going to be that. And in our own realm, we think we're doing well. We feel like we're doing the right thing. We're telling them what we think that they need to do. But there is a big mistake that can be made doing this. I've shared the story about, about my son. Well, my, my three oldest kids, the girls pretty much started off with a lot of experiences and enrichment. And then when my son came along, he too joined the bandwagon. So one thing that I did was I made certain that there were educational toys around for them that would allow them to think, to expand their horizon, and to process things differently. I also put them in front of some shows or movies that I think would influence their thought patterns so that they can start looking at how other people are operating in life. And perhaps that would spark ideas. I took them to the library pretty often and I had them select books and not just storybooks. They had their selection and then there was a requirement to, for them to select a book on a topic of interest. See, what I was doing in that realm is to gauge their inclination. Your child, my kids when they were younger, every kid has an inclination. And if you don't pay attention to that inclination, you're going to brush it aside and funnel them down the road where they too will join the 80% of Americans who hate their jobs. Now I want you to get this statistic here. 80% of people in the U.S. hate their jobs. That's no accident that that, that is the case. 
because we funneled everyone down a path, putting on blinders to their uniqueness and funneling them down that path that we have prepared for them, not for what their souls have prepared for them. Now you as a mommy, you are noticing your child as your child grows up, even as they are young kids. I'm telling you, if you have noticed this, notice the inclination of your baby from even before they start growing teeth. They have a certain inclination. Cueing into that is really great. Reading to them even before they understand a single word you're saying is really great. But more importantly, seeing where that is, what do they gravitate towards? Do you find them when you go to a particular activity, they're going in a certain direction, going to focus on something in particular? Check it out. Put toys in the house, different kinds of toys. One thing I got when my first daughter was born was a little piano. It was a tiny piano. It didn't have all the realm, but it had the keys. And she would go there and hit on the keys and pen out or create little musical tones one key at a time. She, as well as the others, became musical geniuses as far as I am concerned. She, the oldest child, went to the performing arts school, absolutely loved it. That was one of her passions. Then what I noticed was she would always have a little book with her and she was always sketching out designs. It was design of clothing, design of spaces. I always saw that. And then she had a very compassionate heart. And so I suggested that as, as with some of the many moms do, why don't you become a registered nurse and pursue that? You have such a giving heart and a space for that. Well, she did accept that suggestion and thank God she loves it. However, there's another side of her that's buried there, that creative expression side. And now, after 10 years in the nursing profession, getting all of these accolades from all of these hospitals that she has worked at because she is such an excellent professional. The patients love her, the, the workers love her. They, they've offered her leadership roles. She doesn't quite want that. She just wants to be in the trenches with her patients. And so she absolutely loves that, right? And getting all of these awards. Now she's back in design school doing that architectural piece. And because she has that background with the profession of the medical profession, where she has also created stuff for this major hospital in the country that she works at, creating creative stuff for them, getting awards for that as well. Now she's also considering combining the two. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And you should hear her pumped and excited about it. And here is why she loves what she does. And she's even more excited about what she's doing. And get this, she worked full time as a registered nurse while going full time to design school. And people told her, you wouldn't be able to do this. It's impossible. But she is so gifted and talented at that creative space that she did it. And she just told me yesterday, her last semester, my gosh, she just registered for it. So it is amazing how quickly that journey has gone by. She's doing very well. So now with baby number two, she was very business-like. She had that 
attitude about her to get things done and get it done right, get it done on time. All of them were musically inclined. And I knew she was a businesswoman. I knew, but I also did go in and I said, okay, why don't you do nursing? <laughs> and, I mean, they all had their choices to do it because she is very strong-willed. I cannot influence any of my kids against what they want to do just by mere suggestion. So obviously she respected my opinion and she went off to do the nursing. So the business-like approach, she is a neonatal nursing. So she deals with the tiny little babies and guess what? She started a business on her own, doing very well. I saw that inclination of being a businesswoman when she was younger. And then come the third of the oldest of the three. He had a mechanical inclination. He was really great at his hands. I could see that. When, I, when he was younger, I bought a Bissell, Bissell machine, and I didn't know how to open up the thing. And he was 18 months old. He came running up to the thing, and I thought he was going to mess with it. And he just flipped the thing on both ends, and the thing popped open, and my jaw dropped. It's like, whoa, how did you figure that out? I'm standing here for the last minute going around and around this thing, and I couldn't figure this, this out. How did you? Where'd you get that? And he's had that gift of just knowing how to put things together. He used to break a lot of my stuff in the house trying to get behind the whole scene of how it works. And so I suggested, why don't you do mechanical engineering? Because I saw the engineering flair. But he was not, he did not like to sit down with paperwork. So he said, I really don't want to do that, mom. You know, I want to be an auto mechanic. I want to, be able to design cars, to boost them, to make them powerful, and to create something different out of them. And that's exactly what he's doing right now in his own realm. And so they all gravitated towards their passions, and now they're loving it. So now, what about you and your kids? I told you all of that so you could see my story and get ideas for your children. They do have inclination. You're going to have to be flexible. You're going to have to be open. You're going to have to provide them with experiences and watch their mannerisms as you provide them those experiences. Take them to the library, have them pick out books, and then you select books to put in front of them to see how they respond to them. And these are books on, I used to have them pick books on uh, stones or rocks, just educational books about different topics, about animals, just to see how they would respond to it. And to notice how they gravitate towards that. Put movies in front of them that will educate them and see how hooked and how big their eyes get when they see certain topics. Intuitively, those kids come into this world with a natural bent for what they want to do. And you as a parent don't need to divert them. Because if you do, they won't be happy. And they will, like my other two, find a way to gravitate to what their natural inkling were. But that's, you know, you can avoid all the expensive student loans and all the years of whatever the experiences are and just have them get straight to it. If you follow uh, Steve Jobs, he says, your passion, you should love the work that you do. And if, if you don't love it, and you haven't found it, don't stop until you find it. Because if you, when you do, it's like a love relationship. It keeps getting better and better as the years roll on. I can attest to that. Yes, I can. It's wonderful loving what you do every day. 
The sun shines brighter. The flowers are more brilliant. Life is just beautiful. I love my life. And you can too. And you can teach your children to do the same. Now there's one other resource that I have for you before I leave. And I would like you to start looking at businesses or organizations that provide enrichment activities for the children. Of course, talk with your child's teachers to see if they're school age, to see what their favorite subjects are. What are they gravitating towards? If their favorite subject is science, it doesn't mean that they're going to be a scientist. They could do something on their own that involves science. That is why you have to provide them a lot of rich experiences, hands-on stuff. You don't have to go out and buy expensive toys. You can actually go to the consignment store or a thrift store and find educational toys that your kids can actually enjoy. So do that for the benefit of your kids. But do a search for enrichment programs on Google and visit your local YMCA and see what activities they have there that your kids can enjoy and participate in so that they can fulfill whatever their calling is. We all have a calling. We all came here for a reason. We all have a destiny. What is yours? Have you found yours? If you haven't, I have a free resource that will help you to get there. But right now, for your kids, give them that upper leg and that advantage of starting off the right way. And so my friends, this brings us to the end of my live cast. And I thank you for joining me. I know some of you will join me later. And I appreciate that. And when you do, please leave your comments, your likes, the love bubbles, questions, whatever it is, leave it here. I'm very delighted to be here. I'm having a great, great day. And I hope you are too. And I will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Same place, same time. And I look forward to you joining me here. Have the most amazing, amazing afternoon and love you guys.